offer as part of our hearing today. If you'd like to submit materials, please send them to the email address that has been previously distributed to your offices, and we will circulate the materials to members and staff as quickly as possible. I would also ask all members to please mute your microphones when you're not speaking. This will help prevent feedback and other technical issues. You may unmute yourself anytime you seek recognition. I now recognize myself for an opening statement. I wanted, however, the very first sound to be in this hearing, gunfire. Even before we offered instructions, directions, email, gunfire. And the reason is because imagine the whole litany of gunfire in America through weapons of war. There was no notice. There was no information given. There were no signals. There were no instructions about emails or anything else that might have saved our children. It was gunfire. So today the subcommittee turns once again to the subject of gun violence, examining this ongoing crisis by focusing on one of the most terrible tragedies in our nation's history. The murder of 21 people, 19 of them children, on May 24, 2022, at the hands of an 18-year-old armed with an AR-15 style rifle at Robb Elementary School in Evaldi, Texas. That school still stands. In September, Representative Julian Castro and I held a hearing in Uvalde where they listened to parents of victims, citizens, and Anafal Reyes, a teacher in room 111. Mr. Reyes told us that he did not realize what was happening until he saw the bullets breaking sheetrock off the walls. He saw the shoot, shooter's shadow and the sparks coming from the gun as he fired into his classroom, hitting him and then his students. No notice, gunfire. As Mr. Reyes lay on the floor for some 77 minutes, the shooter sat at his desk and taunted him. He poured water on him. He smeared Mr. Reyes own blood onto his face, then shot him in the back to make sure he was dead. Fortunately, Mr. Reyes survived. We got a call when he got the call that morning. Julio Cazares rushed to the school, a parent. While he and other parents begged officers to rush in, he could hear shots being fired inside. As officers began to bring children out of windows, Julio hoped to see his daughter Jacqueline emerge from one of those windows. Sadly, he did not see her. Instead, he later saw his daughter pulled out of an ambulance at the hospital. We now know of the cascade of failures that led to the tragedy at Robb Elementary School. An investigation by a special Texas House investigative committee found that systemic failures and egregiously poor decision-making contributed to the loss of life. Gunfire makes no appointment. Gunfire by an automatic weapon, a weapon of war, never stops. Despite the eventual presence of 376 law enforcement officers, not one of them confronted or engaged the shooter after a group of first officers on the scene tried to approach rooms 111 and 1112 were met with gunfire, gunfire from an AR-15 style rifle. Without an assault weapons ban, more people will die. And if we're not going to ban them, then law enforcement must be trained to confront these weapons of war. Yes, we must train law enforcement like warriors in a battle on the combat field. Gunfire from an AR-15 style rifle turned those armed officers on their heels and left them paralyzed in the hallway for well over an hour. Uvalde Sheriff Ruben Nelasco led a litany of chaos, confusion, and inaction that day. His failures coupled with the presence of an assault rifle left every little hope left very little hope for the children in rooms 111 and 112. Although the officers had information that a child was on the phone with 9-11, surrounded by dead bodies, Sheriff Nalesco led officers away from the immediate threat instead of ordering them to storm the room and try to save the children. That day, law enforcement's failures of implementation, planning, tra training, and duty delayed paramedics' ability to reach those who might be saved. We saw the video of parents trying to climb 
through windows or trying to break through doors. Let me be very clear. This is not a comment on the millions of law enforcement officers who today and days have gone by stand ready to serve, who have broken into places to save people, stop burglary, stop murder, save children, dumped into water, and risked their lives. Don't dare suggest that is the comment today. Don't dare. But what we are saying is that we have to be honest and that babies have died and parents are mourning. And the federal government has to be the final and ultimate word of responding to the sacrifice of those babies and the parents who mourn. We know for certain that Eva Morales, a teacher in room 112, died in an ambulance and three young students died in local hospitals, including Jacqueline, who died at 1.17 p.m. from gunshot wounds to the chest. We will hear today from Faith Mata, a young woman whose 10-year-old sister, Tess, was murdered that day. Ms. Mata will tell us about the hours she spent waiting, hoping to hear that her sister was among the survivors, only to have officers ask her for her DNA sample in order to identify her sister's body. Law enforcement failed the Mata family and every other family represented at Robb Elementary School that day, including the siblings of Uzziah Garcia, who are so afraid to go to school that they get sick to their stomachs. The victims of the horror, and these are babies, 10-year-olds, that took place in Uvalde were also failed by this country's gun laws. While some states restrict the purchase of long guns, including assault weapons, until the age of 21, Texas and federal law allow those guns to be purchased at age 18. The Uvalde shooter asked multiple people to purchase guns for him before he turned 18, but fortunately, they refused. As soon as he was old enough to legally buy the guns for himself, again, 18, not 21, he purchased two AR-15 style rifles. In less than a week, he amassed more than 2,000 rounds of ammunition, with the bulk of it being delivered to his doorstep. It is important to note that the shooter had already purchased 60 30-round magazines, a holographic sight, a snap on trigger system in February before his 18th February birthday. In some states, the shooter's behavior might have allowed someone to raise a red flag and alert authorities that he might be a danger to others and prevent him from obtaining a firearm, but Texas has no such law. These must be federal laws. Again, a red flag law would have stopped the shooter from obtaining these deadly weapons and saved so many precious lives. And they shouldn't be able to opt in. It should be the federal law. As a country, we banned the sale of assault weapons for 10 years, but when the ban expired, we saw a tripling of number of active shooter incidents, a tripling in the average number of people murdered in active shooter incidents, and the mass shootings, the school shootings, the grocery store shootings have continued unabated. Yesterday, we observed the 10th anniversary of the massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. Nothing has been done. On that horrific day, 20 first graders as young as six years old and six teachers were lost to gunfire. Like Uvalde, the Sandy Hook shooting was perpetrated by a young man only 20 years old armed with an AR-style, 15-style assault weapon who had killed his mother before going to the school. Today, in memory of that tragedy, we'll also hear from Nicole Melchiona, a survivor of that massacre. She remembers all too well what it was like as a seven-year-old child to hide in a classroom, trembling in fear, thinking that she would never see her family again as the crack of gunfire echoed the halls of her school. Nicole still bears the scars of her trauma, yet she will come today and bravely tell her story in the hopes uh, that we will take action so that no child will ever endure that again. Democrats in Congress have spent more than two decades trying to do something, anything, to stop the violence and end the bloodshed. We hope the Republicans will join us, but they oppose us at every turn. During this Congress alone, Democrats have put forward numerous policy proposals to prevent losses of life like those in Uvalde, Buffalo, Sandy Hook, Tree of Life, El Paso, Las Vegas, and the Pulse nightclub, among others. Through this committee, we have supported raising the age of firearms, extreme risk protection orders, or red flag laws, or renewed assault weapons ban, restrictions on large capacity magazines. I introduced a simple bill honoring Kimberly Vaughn uh, Firearm Safety Storage Act. She died at Santa Fe, 14 years old, which would have encouraged the proper storage of firearms and ammunition. Democrats also put forth numerous bills to invest in the fund, uh, in fund law enforcement, including bills that would provide better training and targeted resources coordinate the creation of an active shooter alert, and ensure better communication and trust between our law enforcement and the communities they serve. Led by our chairman, Chairman Nadler, we've worked every single day. But bill after bill, policy after policy, our friends, Republican colleagues, oppose our efforts to keep our communities safer. They've repeatedly opposed legislation that could prevent violence, and they've opposed investments in effective law enforcement. 
And while rejecting and distorting our common sense proposals, Republicans have offered no credible policy solutions of their own. We hope today, as the meeting says, that we can develop a bipartisan approach. As a result uh, of these lax gun laws and underinvestments in law enforcement have led to higher rates in red states, have had spillover effects across the country as guns flow into our communities without restraint. In June, after Uvalde, we were able to enact the bipartisan